and so it is written. First man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Albeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. There are a lot of people who blame Eve for the downfall of mankind. Today, there are a lot of hurt people saying, if Eve did not eat from the tree and also gave to Adam to eat, the scripture said Adam was with her when she ate, our lives would have been better and we wouldn't be suffering. Israelites and indigenous black people, if you truly honored the Most High and repent by serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you wouldn't be suffering. The Most High said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I would hear them from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If the indigenous black people was serving the Most High with a pure heart like they served the idols of the heathens, the Most High would have saved his people a long time ago. Many indigenous black people rather complain instead of taking responsibility for their own actions. Instead of holding themselves accountable for their own sins, they rather blame Eve. Adam and Eve repented and served the Most High before they transitioned to the afterlife. The Most High forgave them and made a way to redeem Adam and Eve as well as their descendants. Thousands of years later, their children are complaining about their situations. If the indigenous black people understood their God, they would comprehend that everything was established before the foundation of the earth and the heavens were created. Everyone who is destined for eternity has been determined before the foundation of the world was created by the Most High. The souls to every person that will inherit eternal life has already been created. Some of these people are waiting to be born. And Proville told me all the things that I have told thee. We have written, sit and write all the souls of mankind. However, many of them are born and the places prepared for them to eternity. For all souls are prepared to eternity before the formation of the world. A lot of indigenous black people say they want freedom and don't want to associate themselves with the other species of mankind, but they continue to procreate with these people, welcome them into all areas of their lives, show them the ins and outs of their culture, allow these people to teach them abominable pagan traditions. In addition, treat the other species of mankind better than they do their own people. They idolize the other species of mankind. Yet they want to convince the world that they seek to be independent and free from the other species of mankind. Stop deceiving yourself. When you begin to separate from the beast culture and not follow after the heathens, then the Most High can begin to save his people. Until then, you will continue to go around in circles until the remnant repent wholeheartedly. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. When the people of the Most High begin to understand spirit, they will stop analyzing the spiritual things with a carnal mind. I've noticed in the awakening, many Israelites are trying to comprehend the spiritual with the flesh. If you continue to operate this way, you will never understand the word of the Most High, nor will you ever understand spirit. The Most High knew that Adam and Eve would transgress his laws. He made plans long before they sinned to redeem his creation. The Most High said he does not find pleasure in the death of his creation. The Most High do not want to destroy his creatures, nor does he celebrate when men perish. The Most High want his creation to live, not die. For I am God, the creator, who, when I create my creatures, 
did not intend to destroy them, but after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary they still continue hardening in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Indigenous black people, you are not the only creatures the Most High created. There are multiple heavens. Each heaven has its purpose. The Most High created the deep that house many living creatures. These creatures are known to us as marine spirits. The Most High created man to dwell in the garden. The Most High created the heavens, the angels, and animals before he created men. The Most High want all of his creation to live. Condemning Adam and Eve for doing what you have done and continue to do, sin, does not make you more righteous. The same way the Most High gave you mercy, he did the same for Adam and Eve. The Most High is patient and long-suffering. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. The time has come for the people of the Most High to start to put into practice the lessons the Most High has taught them to cleanse them from their sins. If we're the people of the Most High, our ways must reflect his ways. Many people blame Adam and Eve for the downfall of men, yet Satan, whom the scriptures said deceived the whole world, is not targeted nor blamed for being the real manipulator and the cause to the downfall of men. He is your adversary. Satan confessed to Adam that it was him that inserted himself into the serpent to deceive Eve. Satan deceived them because he is angry and a hater of all things good. Satan knew that he couldn't fulfill all that he promised to Adam and Eve. He wanted them to fall so he can rule over them. Your eyes have seen the good he has taken from you, and in truth he has opened your eyes. And you have seen the garden in which ye were with me, and ye have also seen the evil that has come upon you from Satan. But as to the Godhead, he cannot give it you, neither fulfill his speech to you. Nay, he was bitter against you and your seed that will come after you. Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. The Most High warned Adam not to eat from the tree of good and evil because he knew that Satan would deceive him. The Most High said to Adam, he warned him about the tree so that Adam can make the right choices. Additionally, the Most High warned his people so that if they transgress his statutes, commandments, and laws, his people cannot blame him for their poor decisions. Then I commanded thee concerning the tree, that thou eat not thereof, yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive thee. So I made known to thee by means of the tree, not to come near him, and I told thee not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor to taste of it nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. Had I not been and spoken to thee, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left thee without a commandment, and thou hadst sin, it would have been an offense on my part. For not having given thee any order, thou wouldst turn around and blame me for it. But I commanded thee, and warned thee, and thou didst fall, so that my creatures cannot blame me, but the blame rests on them alone. Likewise, Israelites, you cannot blame Adam and Eve for your sinful nature. The blame is solely on yourselves. The same way Adam and Eve seek redemption, you ought to do the same. A lot of the blame for our present condition fall on Eve's shoulder, as if she was the one who told our ancestors to disobey the Most High. As a result, we are living in the land of our captivity. Adam and Eve command their children before they transition to serve the Most High all the days of their lives. Then our father Adam blessed them all and said to Seth, after he had blessed them, O Seth, my son, 
Thou knowest this world that it is full of sorrow and of weariness, and thou knowest all that has come upon us from our trials in it. I therefore now command thee in these words to keep innocency, to be pure and just, and trusting in God, and lean not to the discourse of Satan, nor to the operations in which he will show himself to thee. But keep the commandments that I give thee this day, then give the same to thy son Enos, and let Enos give it to his son Canaan, and Canaan to his son Mahalalel, so that this commandment abide firm among all your children. If the children of Seth honored their father Adam's command of serving the Most High, also if the generation prior to us adhered to the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High, we would be dwelling on the holy mountain close to the Garden of Eden, serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth. However, our ancestors transgressed and followed the children of Cain. Everyone must take accountability for their own actions. The Bible said that Satan through the serpent said to Eve that if you eat of the tree, you will not die, but become gods, knowing good and evil. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil and becoming gods is not the only thing Satan promised Adam and Eve that made them eat from the forbidden tree. Satan promised Adam and Eve a lot more to get them to eat from the tree of knowing good and evil. Satan promised them the Godhead. He promised to make them a garden just like the Garden of Eden. Also, Satan promised to give them divinity. O oh, Adam, ask him who deceived thee to give thee the divine nature he promised thee or to make thee a garden as I had made for thee, or to fill thee with that same bright nature with which I had filled thee. Ask him to make thee a body like the one I made thee, or to give thee a day of rest as I gave thee, or to create within thee a reasonable soul as I did create for thee, or to remove thee hence to some other earth than this one which I gave thee. But, O oh Adam, he will not fulfill even one of the things he told thee. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgress of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalt state such as I have, so that I deprive you of the bright nature in which you then were, and I made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. Simply telling Eve that she would know the difference between good and evil was not enough to get them to transgress the Most High's commandments. The Bible withheld a lot of information about the reason Adam and Eve transgressed, just as the angels who followed Satan. Satan made great promises to the angels. He promised to give them great kingdoms and many more. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that Adam desired the Godhead. That is why he made a covenant with Satan. When the Most High said to Adam that Satan cannot fulfill his promise to him, Adam asked Satan if he could make him a garden just as the Most High did for him. Satan had to confess to Adam that he couldn't fulfill what he promised him. But after the angels were gone from Adam and Eve, came Satan with shamefacedness and stood at the entrance of the cave in which were Adam and Eve. He then called to Adam and said, O oh Adam, come, let me speak to thee. Then Adam came out of the cave, thinking he was one of God's angels that was come to give him some good counsel. But when Adam came out and saw his hideous figure, he was afraid of him and said unto him, Who art thou? Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou 
that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell, and with you also, whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. Israelites, this is why you must guard your heart. Adam wanted the Godhead. His heart revealed it. That is probably the reason he didn't do much to interfere. The Bible said that Adam was with Eve when she ate. The scriptures revealed in the book of Adam and Eve of Adam asking Satan about all the things he promised him. How would Adam know of these promises if he wasn't with Eve? There are many people in this generation who are trading their glory for the lesser. They are exchanging their soul for fame, money, and power. Little do they know Satan cannot fulfill what he promised them. The people who sell their souls to Satan and allow themselves to be deceived by him suffer terrible deaths. Majority of them lose all of the power, fame, and money before they transition to the afterlife. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The second book of Enoch said the Most High desired to create a new world. And in this world, Adam was to be the leader of that world. The Most High tests Adam to see if he would be faithful as well as to see if his descendants would love him. The Most High knew Adam would fall. However, he tests Adam for Adam to know what is truly in his heart. And I appointed him a name from the four component parts, from east, from west, from south, from north. And I appointed for him four special stars. And I called his name Adam and showed him the two ways, the light and the darkness. And I told him, this is good and that bad, that I should learn whether he has love towards me or hatred, that it be clear which in his race love me. For I have seen his nature, but he has not seen his own nature. Therefore, through not seeing, he will sin worse. And I said, after sin, what is there but death? And I put sleep into him, and he fell asleep. And I took from him a rib and created him a wife, that death should come to him by his wife. And I took his last word and called her name mother, that is to say, Eva. A lot of people do not know what they are capable of. Nor do they know what is truly in their heart until the Most High show you by testing you. Throughout the tales of Adam and Eve, I have mentioned several ways the Most High created Adam and spoke about his nature before the fall. It is important for the people of the Most High to know about both of their nature, the visible and the invisible nature. We often refer to both nature as spirit and flesh. Your flesh is visible and your spirit is invisible. The second book of Enoch gave us more details about how the Most High created Adam. On the sixth day, I commanded my wisdom to create man from seven consistencies. One, his flesh from the earth. Two, his blood from the dew. Three, his eyes from the sun. Four, his bones from stone. Five, his intelligence from the swiftness of the angels and from cloud. Six, his veins and his hair from the grass of the earth. 7. His soul from the breath and from the wind. And I gave him seven natures, to the flesh hearing, the eyes for sight, to the soul smell, the veins for touch, the blood for taste, the bones for endurance, to the intelligence sweetness. I conceive a cunning saying to say, I created man from invisible and from visible nature. Of both are his death and life and image. He knows speech like some created things, small in greatness and again great in smallness. And I place him on earth, a second angel, honorable and great and glorious. And I appointed him as ruler to rule on earth and to have my wisdom. And there was none like him of earth of all my existing creatures. And I appointed him a name from the four component parts from east, from west, from south, from north. And I appointed for him four special stars, and I called his name Adam, and showed him the two ways, the light and the darkness, and I told him. The Bible made it appear as if Adam and Eve life has zero value for the redemption of their people. Everything the Messiah did was a repeat of the sacrifices Adam and Eve did to be accepted back into the garden. 
Adam and Eve shed their blood and offered their blood as a sacrifice for their sin to the Most High. The Most High said to Adam he would do the same for the redemption of his people. Yet now look upon our blood, which is offered upon these stones, and accept it at our hands, like the praise we used to sing unto thee at first, when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests unto God. Then came the word of God to Adam, and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood, when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. When Satan tried to kill Adam and Eve by throwing a big rock on them, Adam and Eve were trapped under the rock for three days. The Most High said to Adam, Likewise, he would lay in a rock and sealed with a large stone for three days and night as well. The Most High said he would suffer for their salvation. Yet, O Adam, fear not, neither say in thy heart that I have spread this rock as an awning over thee to plague thee therewith. It came from Satan, who had promised thee the Godhead and majesty. It is he who threw down this rock to kill thee under it and Eve with thee, and thus to prevent you from living upon the earth. But in mercy for you, just as the rock was falling down upon you, I commanded it to form an awning over you and the rock under you to lower itself. And this sign, O Adam, will happen to me at my coming upon earth. Satan will raise the people of the Jews. Job put me to death, and they will lay me in a rock and seal a large stone upon me, and I shall remain within that rock three days and three nights. But on the third day I shall rise again, and it shall be salvation to thee, O Adam, and to thy seed, to believe in me. But, O Adam, I will not bring thee from under this rock until three days and three nights are past. Then Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of God's words to them that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. There was a lot of events that transpired in the life of Adam and Eve that is symbolic to the coming of the Messiah. This is why the church referred to the Messiah as the second Adam. The Most High shared many prophecies and mysteries with Adam. Adam has shared many of those prophecies with his children. Adam shared everything with Abel as well as with Seth and all of his grandchildren before he transitioned. And now, O Seth, my son, behold, I have revealed unto thee hidden mysteries, which God had revealed unto me. Keep my commandment for thyself and for thy people. When Adam and Eve journeyed to the west side of Eden, the Most High informed Adam not to travel to the western borders. The Most High revealed to Adam that his seed would dwell in that region and submit to Satan and follow Satan. The western region Adam and Eve journeyed to was where Cain and his descendants would settle in the future. When the Most High revealed this prophecy to Adam, Cain was not yet born. The Most High said to Adam that it was his seed. The scriptures verify that Cain is Adam's seed. Due to Cain's hard heart, he followed after Satan and his children were known as the sinners. And God said unto Adam, O Adam, what seekest thou on the western border? And why hast thou left thy own accord, the eastern border, in which was thy dwelling place? Now then, turn back to thy cave and remain in it, that Satan do not deceive thee, nor work his purpose upon thee. For in this western border, O Adam, there will go from thee a seed that shall replenish it, 
and that will defile themselves with their sins and with their yielding to the behests of Satan and by following his works. After the death of Adam and of Eve, Seth severed his children and his children's children from Cain's children. Cain and his seed went down and dwelt westward below the place where he had killed his brother Abel. During the time the Most High revealed to Adam that his seed would follow Satan, the Most High also said to Adam that he would send the flood to destroy the sinners and save the righteous. This was the first account of the Most High revealing to Adam about the flood. The Most High said to Adam, the land he lived now will become desolate without any inhabitants. Therefore will I bring upon them the waters of a flood and overwhelm them all, but I will deliver what is left of the righteous among them. And I will bring them to a distant land, and the land in which thou dwellest now shall remain desolate and without one inhabitant in it. During the leadership of Jared was when man's wickedness was at an all-time high. The Bible revealed violence and wickedness rule the earth. It was also during this time the fallen angels began to procreate with the daughters of men. The Most High spoke to Jared and gave him instructions on what to do concerning Adam's body as well as the flood. The children of Cain were not the only people who defiled themselves. The children of Seth joined the children of Cain in their abominations as well. Before Adam transitioned, he gathered his children and all of his grandchildren to him and gave them specific instructions. Adam instructed his children to take his body with them on the ark. Once they arrived to their destination, they must bury his body in the middle of the earth. O oh my son, hereafter shall a flood come and overwhelm all creatures and leave out only eight souls. But, O oh my son, let those whom it will leave out from among your children at that time take my body with them out of this cave. And when they have taken it with them, let the oldest among them command his children to lay my body in a ship until the flood has been assuaged and they come out of the ship. Then they shall take my body and lay it in the middle of the earth shortly after they have been saved from the waters of the flood. The Bible does not mention that Noah was instructed to take Adam's body and bury Adam's body in the middle of the earth. This is an important piece of information for the people of the Most High to know. Why would the Bible exclude that the body of Adam was taken on the ark? I believe the synagogue of Satan withheld this information because the middle of the earth play a significant role in the redemption of our people. Adam said from where his body is buried, that is where the Most High will come to save his people. For the place where my body shall be laid is the middle of the earth. God shall come from thence and shall save all our kindred. This was Adam speaking to his son Seth and his grandchildren, letting them know that the Most High will come from the middle of the earth to save his people. Where is the middle of the earth? The beast system said the middle of the earth is the Middle East. I believe that is false. The synagogue of Satan say that region is the middle of the earth to hide the identity of the people of the Most High, as well as to support their deceptions. The meeting location of the equator and the prime meridian line is in the South Atlantic Ocean. The body of water that is closest to this meeting place is the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa. According to the beast system, there is an island there called Null Island. The closest country to the meeting of the prime meridian and the equator is none other than Ghana. This location plays a significant role in the Israelites' history. A lot of our people were captured and scattered from this part of the world. A lot of our people live in West Africa. We must investigate further about the prophecies about the middle of the earth. Adam went on to say to his people that the treasures the Most High gave him and Eve from the garden must be buried with him. He then turned to his son Seth and to Eve his wife and said to them, Preserve this gold, this incense, and this myrrh that God has given us for a sign for in the days that are coming, a flood will overwhelm the whole creation. But those who shall go into the ark shall take with them the gold, the incense, and the myrrh together with my body, and will lay the gold, the incense, and the myrrh with my body in the midst of the earth. 
Then Adam said that the treasures the Most High gave him from the garden would be stolen. However, none of them will be destroyed. Then, after a long time, the city in which the gold, the incense, and the myrrh are found with my body shall be plundered. But when it is spoiled, the gold, the incense, and the myrrh shall be taken care of with the spoil that is kept, and not of them shall perish until the word of God made men shall come. When kings shall take them and shall offer to him gold in token of his being king, incense in token of his being God of heaven and earth, and myrrh in token of his passion. Cold also as a token of his overcoming Satan and all our foes. Incense as a token that he will rise from the dead and be exalted above things in heaven and things in the earth and myrrh in token that he will drink bitter gall and feel the pains of hell from Satan. Israelites, this is why the workers of iniquity cannot let the remains of our ancestors rest in peace. The heathens are always digging up the dead to plunder the treasures they find buried with the deceased. Also, the other species of mankind are disturbing the remains of ancient people to try and prove that they are the original people. Every time they disturb the dead, the result always prove our ancestors are the mothers and fathers of this earth. They become disappointed with their findings. The treasures the Most High gave to Adam and Eve from the garden were three gifts. Each item had a purpose. After these things, God said unto Adam, Thou didst ask of me something from the garden to be comforted therewith. And I have given thee these three tokens as a consolation to thee that thou trust in me and in my covenant with thee. For I will come and save thee, and the kings shall bring me, when in the flesh, gold incense and myrrh, gold as a token of my kingdom, incense as a token of my divinity, and myrrh as a token of my suffering and of my death. But, O Adam, put these by thee in the cave, the gold that it may shed light over thee by night, the incense that thou smellest sweet savor, and the myrrh to comfort thee in thy sorrow. When Adam heard these words from God, he worshipped before him. He and Eve worshipped him and gave him thanks, because he had dealt mercifully with them. A lot of the prophecies the Most High revealed to Adam was not disclosed in the Bible. The Most High gave Jared more instructions concerning Adam's body. Jared said to Noah and to the righteous men that remain on the holy mountain, that Shem would be the one to bury Adam's body in the middle of the earth with the gifts the Most High gave him from the garden. And unto him of you who shall be left, O my sons, shall the word of God come, and when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Then Noah said unto him, Who is he of us that shall be left? And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loin, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. Everything written must be fulfilled. Shem inherited the middle of the earth for his land inheritance. It made sense that he was selected to bury the body of Adam. Shem was the son Noah blessed and said, Blessed be the God of Shem. Through Shem's lineage came the bloodline of the chosen people, the Israelites. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children. And he divided the earth into the lots which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands and took the writing out of the bosom of Noah, their father. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Israelites, can you discern why each man was highlighted in the scriptures? Before the foundation of the earth, the Most High knew whom among the children of men he could show himself strong through, as well as who would disobey and follow Satan. From Adam to Shem, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salvation travels through the righteous. The Bible said Noah's ark stopped and rested on Mount Ararat. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. According to the B system, Mount Ararat is located in the Middle East in the nation of Turkey. The workers of iniquity claim they have found Noah's Ark. According to some of their publications, they can't confirm. If Ghana is the closest country to the middle of the earth, I don't believe the mountain they claim to be Mount Ararat is the correct mountain. The synagogue of Satan has altered the scriptures and changed words. That I can confirm. South Africa has a mountain that is called Mount Ararat. This mountain is said to be located in Eden District Municipality in Western Cape, South Africa. Some publications say Mount Ararat in South Africa is located in Limpopo. Israelites, which location do you believe is the correct location to Mount Ararat? The book of Adam and Eve went on to say that the Most High showed Shem and Melchizedek, the priest, where to bury the body of Adam. They traveled some distance from where the ark rested to bury the body of Adam. When they reached the location to where Adam was to be buried, Melchizedek stayed to minister before the body of Adam until the time of Abraham, the patriarch. Shem then departed and returned to his kindred, while Melchizedek remained standing before the body of our father Adam, ministering unto God and worshiping him evermore. And an angel abode with him who protect him and brought him food until the time of Abraham the patriarch. The book of Joshua said Ham stole the garments Adam and Eve wore. He later gave those garments to his son Cush. Cush gave the garments to his son Nimrod. And when Ham begat his firstborn Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was twenty years old, he put on those garments. According to the scriptures, Adam's garment gave Nimrod powers. That is why Nimrod is known as the first mighty man on earth. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments and God gave him might and strength. And he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field and he hunted the animals and he built altars and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Adam gave his children specific instructions on what to do with his body, as well as the treasures the Most High gave to him from the garden. Nowhere in the scriptures did Adam instruct his children to preserve his garment. He did instruct them to preserve the treasures from the garden. Adam did say the kings of the earth were still the treasures. Nimrod ruled over the whole earth during his time. However, Noah sealed the door to the ark. No one was able to enter the ark to tamper with Adam's body. Only Shem and Melchizedek, the anointed priest, could open the door. Then Shem took Melchizedek and they saddled an ass between them and they went to the ark. But they had no key wherewith to open the ark. For Noah had fastened it with a padlock after he had come out of it. When therefore they came to the ark, they bethought themselves how to open it. Then came Shem to the door and said to Melchizedek, Come, open it, O thou great God. Then came Melchizedek to the door when he heard Shem's voice and seized the padlock, and at once the door was opened. The book of Joshua said, Ham stole Adam and Eve's garments as they were exiting the ark. Noah probably didn't see when Ham took those garments. Noah did seal the ark after he exited, as you have heard in the scriptures. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Nimrod was a giant. If Nimrod was a giant from the seed of the fallen, he wouldn't be able to fit into Adam's clothes. Nor would the Most High allow him to wear Adam's garment and give him special strength when wearing the garment. Nimrod was deceived by Satan just like countless other children of men fell by Satan's false promises. Many of the heathens' holiday traditions of today are celebrating Nimrod in disguise. 
Yet when Ragu, Philek's firstborn son, was 130 years old, there reigned one of the first kings that ever reigned on the earth named Nimrod, a giant. That Nimrod saw a cloud of light under heaven, a mere operation of Satan. And he inclined his heart to it and covet its beauty, and then called to one whose name was Santel, a carver, and said to him, Carve me a crown of gold after the pattern of that cloud. Then Santel made him a crown of gold, which Nimrod took and placed upon his own head. Wherefore was it said that a cloud had come down from heaven and overshadowed him, and he became so wicked as to think within himself that he was God. Adam's body was buried with the treasures the Most High gave to him from the garden. Adam died before Eve. It was said because he was the first man created, he was the first to die. But Adam was the first whose soul died in the land of Eden, in the cave of treasures. For no one died before him but his son Abel, who died murdered. Abel was murdered. He did not die naturally. That is why the scripture said Adam was the first person to die in the land of Eden. Adam lived to be 930 years old. The death of Adam took place at the end of 930 years that be lived upon the earth. On the 15th day of Bermuda, after the reckoning of an epoch of the sun at the ninth hour. It was on a Friday, the very day on which he was created and on which he rested. And the hour that which he died was the same as that which he came out of the garden. The journey of Adam and Eve plays a significant role in our lives. They were the first humans. It is important that we know about the journey of the first people, the most high made in his image and likeness. The life they live shouldn't be a mystery to us because we are their children. The covenant the most high made with Adam for salvation is the same covenant that transferred from generation to generation. Our generation have hope in that same everlasting covenant that has been traveling in Adam's bloodline. I am glad the Most High gave us an insight to Adam and Eve's journey. Whatever is hidden, the Most High will make known. Let the blessing of the Most High rest upon our father Adam and mother Eve. I pray that this generation reconcile themselves to the Most High in repentance so that the next generation will have hope and salvation. Israelites, Serve the Most High with a pure heart. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee.